Welcome to this presentation entitled External Aerodynamics Modeling Flow Around a Tractor Trailer with ANSYS Fluent. In this presentation, you will find out how to set up and solve a 3D external aerodynamics problem in Fluent. Here's a schematic of the tractor trailer model. The tractor trailer is 48 feet long by 8 feet wide by 8 feet tall, and the fluid box surrounding the tractor trailer is 200 feet long by 150 feet wide by 90 feet tall. This model simulates the truck driving down the highway at 60 miles per hour. The model was built in ANSYS Design Modeler using primitives and sketches. Here we can zoom in and look at the sketch used to build the tractor trailer. Box primitives were used to fill out the undercarriage, and then cylinder primitives were used to build the wheels and tires. A large box primitive was used to build the fluid volume. Then the tractor trailer volume was subtracted from the fluid volume. Finally, the fluid volume was sliced by the global XY plane to cut the model in half and reduce the size of the mesh. Inflation layers are composed of prism cells, generally perpendicular to the wall, which help resolve the boundary layer and improve solution accuracy. The first layer height of 2.5 millimeters corresponds to Y plus of 150 based on the model's Reynolds number, which puts it right in the middle of the boundary layer log layer, which is where you want your first element to be if you're using the realizable K-epsilon model, which we intend to. This boundary layer mesh is a little coarse, but given the mesh size limitations, there is little we can do. Let's zoom in and look at the inflation layers in detail. See it right there. Let's look near the cab. And then in the front and the undercarriage. Name selections were then added to the model. Here you can see the inlet. Here we have um, symmetry on that side of the model. We have a symmetry boundary condition on top. Here's our outlet in the back. Then you have, um, that's the road, that's walls bottom. Here we have walls in the truck, and then we have another symmetry plane bisecting the truck. The model was then brought into the Fluent Solver. The mesh was converted to polyhedra, which reduced the mesh size by over 60%. If you zoom in, you could see that the inflation layer is still composed of prism elements, not polyhedros. Going through the solution setup, the model was set to run steady state. The only physical model activated was the realizable K-epsilon turbulence model. The default material, constant property air, was used. The boundary conditions were then defined. The velocity inlet was set to 26.83 meters per second, which is equivalent to 60 miles per hour. The turbulent boundary conditions were set to intensity and length scale, where the intensity was 3%, and the length scale was the width of the tractor trailer, 2.44 meters. The outlet pressure was set to zero gauge. The default solution methods and solution controls were used. A monitor was defined to plot and print the drag coefficient as the solution is converging. Once the residuals all fall below 1e to the minus 3 and the drag coefficient is essentially constant, the solution can be considered convert. The solution was initialized from the inlet boundary. And the model was then run for a thousand iterations. The solution is converged, so let's do a little bit of post-processing. Here's a contour plot of the static pressure on the tractor trailer walls. You can see very high pressure on the surfaces which are normal or almost normal to the flow, such as the front of the cab. If we calculate the drag coefficient, it turns out to be pretty high at 0.97. Now let's look at a contour plot of velocity magnitude on the XY plane which bisects the truck. You can see how the flow accelerates as it moves over and under the truck. There's a large low speed recirculation zone in the back of the trailer, as you would expect. You can also see that the flow separates over the cab in a large portion of the trailer. Finally, here's an animation of the flow streamlines going around the tractor trailer created in CFD Post. The velocity of the streamline arrowheads is proportional to the local velocity magnitude. This concludes the presentation. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.